So welcome back. Uh, we've talked about updating and getting into 10.1. So now we're into 10.1. And at this point, Steve is going to pick up and talk about actually using the libraries that we mentioned during the update process. Yes, uh, libraries are the fundamental building blocks of working in Final Cut Pro 10.1. As we've seen in previous lessons, a library is a top level container for managing your media, edit decisions, and all associated metadata. When launching Final Cut Pro for the first time, an active library, a single active library, appears in a library's pane of the UI. Now, of course, if you opted to upgrade your existing Final Cut Pro events and projects, as Mark discussed in the previous lesson on upgrading, you'll potentially see multiple libraries listed here. Libraries are identified by a four-star tiled icon. If you click the disclosure triangle next to the library, you'll reveal at least one event. An event is like a folder for storing all the media you've imported into your library. If you select the event, you'll reveal a project. A project is the movie you create with the media stored in the event. So in terms of hierarchy, libraries contain events and events contain projects. In order for Final Cut Pro to run, it must have at least one active library. However, you can have as many libraries as you like, and here's the big thing, they can be stored on any connected hard drive in any location. Before we look at creating additional libraries and importing media into an event, let's first discuss what a typical library workflow might look like. You should start by asking yourself a few questions. For instance, how do you decide when to create a new library versus just adding an event to an existing library? Well, there are no hard and fast rules. For example, you can think of your libraries as self-contained production units. Those productions contain workspaces, which are the events. And then within those workspaces, you'll have the timelines, your actual work itself, your edit, your edit decisions, the sum total of everything you create in terms of your final movie. So all the media associated with that edit and the project itself in the event Right, so you can clearly see the progression. Libraries contain events, which contain projects. Well, what I want to do now is take a quick look at some scenarios, some examples on how you might use this new library workflow or these production units. So, for example, you might be working on a short film or a feature film. So you might set up your libraries this way. You might have, we're just calling it movie A and movie B for right now, but it's, it's very simple to see. You can set up a single library for one movie, another library for another movie under your production workflow uh, scenario. Within those libraries, you'll have perhaps uh, separate events that you'll want to label daily. So you'll have little containers within each library that contain the various dailies for each of your movies. As you can see here, if I go to the next slide, movie A would contain three daily events. Or as many as you needed, but you could have a separate event for that day's shooting. Could all go into that particular event. If we look further, within each event itself, you'll have the individual shots that you've imported into that event, plus you'll have additional projects. The projects could be a string out, maybe a rough cut, could be a first assembly, but essentially it's all of the content that you've kind of put together in a project, a timeline, that's referencing media from these events. Let's look at another scenario. Maybe you're working on a episodic television series, uh, and that's, uh, that's big right now. Big shows on, uh, on cable that, uh, that have uh, all these seasons and episodes. Uh, what are we up to, like, up season six on uh, Breaking Bad Breaking now? Breaking Bad, right, right. Oh, my gosh. 60, 65, 64, 65 episodes over six seasons. Right, so you, so you can set up your library vis-a-vis -vis seasons. So you can set up a production library for season one, season two, and within each uh, season, you might have the individual episode breakdowns. It would be an event, so one event per episode. And it looks like this could handle webisodes, too. So it could handle big, you know, cable or television production, but could also, if you're doing a regular web production that works perfectly for that kind of thing as well. Right. Again, we're just kind of giving you a, a, a large picture view of what, how you might think about yeah. setting these up. Um, and of course, in your timelines, you have your footage, your assembly, your final cut. You, you, I think you get the general idea uh, in terms of how you want to set up your projects. So let's go into the next scenario. Maybe you're working uh, on an event, maybe a music video or doing a wedding, a bar mitzvah, or, you know, you're a independent production company. You do all kinds of different things. I have a, a library set up here for, let's say, wedding A and wedding B, but it could be essentially any event. And uh, the events themselves are broken down here by you know, preparations. Maybe the ceremony is a separate event. The reception is a separate event that you can actually bring in media related to those events into those containers. And just a logical organization. And, and you're not stuck with any of this. You can decide it to do one way. And you can, of course, merge events, create new events, move media between events. Exactly. So. 
what, what we've done is kind of shown you three different scenarios of how you might look at setting up a library or an event. There's no hard and fast rules. There's, there's nothing to say you have to set up this way. It's just pretty much the logic that you determine for having setting up your workflow. Not really what works for you.